What's up? What's up? What's up? Just the fifty JP in the house. Okay, I want to talk about um, agendas. Okay, agenda, agenda. So I guess I should put it as there. Agendas. When I know a lot of brothers and sisters and anyone who comes to Japan, your agenda is not to your agenda is to come here to work, um, enjoy the culture, enjoy meeting people, uh, learning language. And of course, work if that's what your visa is for, unless you're just traveling. But for this, for those who are here long term and who are working, anyway, um, your agenda is very important, and you must protect it at all times. There are a lot of things over here that will detract you or even totally derail you from your agenda. The reason I say pay attention to your agenda and stick to your agenda is. Uh, it's because it's for the reason that sometime in your life you're going to come back to your dreams and or your agenda or whatever it is that you wanted to do at first in your life and if something derailed it or something major or tragic happens then you're going to you will go through some type of regret like why didn't I finish my my um, Agenda first, and why did I do this, and why did I do that? Okay, so it's very important that you finish your agenda, because that urge to finish it will never ever go away until it's done. Okay, um, there are a lot of things that will distract you. Marriage is one. Uh, I want to talk about that. Well, I was going to put that in another video, because yesterday I made a, I made the same video. It was real nice, but the battery went out, and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I was talking for like. 45 minutes and the uh, and I only recorded like how much? Uh, I only recorded about what a minute and 11 seconds of that. <laughs> I was really surprised. But anyway, um, when you come out here, you know you're not the only ones who have agendas. Everyone else have agendas, and it's very important that you stick to yours okay I'll talk about a lot of things as I'm going through so this might be another long video okay um, and again my emphasis is on uh, the international marketing links my other video and as I said in that video hopefully I said it correctly is that the black neighborhoods we're always talking about how we don't have any international connections and we don't do that and you do um, there are a lot of black people who've been overseas and they are your connections. They come from different neighborhoods, and you guys got to make those connections to them to uh, be able to bring economical changes in your um, neighborhoods and also doing international business because instead of other people coming to your neighborhood selling you doing things, your people in their native countries can buy those same things and send it to you, and you can sell them to yourself. So, okay. Um, Let's see what else. Okay, so let me let me get into this real quick because this might be a little long. Okay, so international businesses. Okay, you go to college. A lot of people go to college and they study international businesses, communications, relations, hobbies, lifestyle, and all of this stuff. Okay, a lot of us come over here. Well, I won't say a lot of us, but a lot of you come over here with degrees in different, um, in different. Uh, you know, I wore this shirt again. Well, that's interesting, huh? I don't know why. But anyway, um, you come over here, or it could be the same day. Okay, not joking. Okay, you come over here, and a lot of people do not have a lot of, um, do not have degrees in these things, but we are all exposed to these. Whether we took these in Harvard or wherever colleges there are, we are exposed to these. Every time you um, go to a job or you doing, you go shopping, whatever, there's still international business. And international business is not one of those big words where it's talking about you only going out and creating this profit. You're also conducting exchanges also, but it might not be in profit in cash profits for you, but still it's there. But um, even at that, um, or um, even at that, that sounds strange. But anyway, the... Um, there are a lot of people here that you're going to meet, and a lot of the people in Japan have their own businesses, or they're doing their own businesses, or they talk about business, 
and things like that. It's not always just partying and all that other stuff. A lot of people, like I said before in one of my other videos, I talked to this one Japanese man and what did he talk, think about it. He just said, you know, business was one of the other ones I won't say, but business was number one, making money was the number one thing. So anyway, we come out here and we have um, these opportunities that we all engage in, okay? What I would suggest that a lot of um, brothers, sisters do while you're here is write about these things, okay? Because a lot of books that talk about Japan are outdated and they don't get into a lot of stuff, you know, and they don't get as deep as we can. So in other words, like I know, uh, well, I can, I can get interviews with people who have million dollar businesses, maybe billion dollar businesses and things like that. I've met a lot of Japanese men who are very successful, uh, some Japanese women who are very successful in their businesses and um, I should have, I wasn't thinking of giving an interview or anything, but a lot of um, people that you meet will have those, so you have to get out and when you see people, talk to them, don't be shy and think that they're all racist and stuff because actually if you talk to a person they they probably won't even talk about race or anything they're probably going to end up talking about their life and things that they like to do and if you offer them your ears and ear they'll tell you that plus more and a lot of the information that they'll tell you is a lot of stuff that you probably wouldn't read or won't have a chance to read I should say so it's really good. Anyway, when you're here and you're doing international businesses, please write about this stuff because you can even make money. I mean, you can make money doing this. But anyway, for international businesses, there are three different kinds of business here. One is called um, Kabuki. Kabuki? Kabuki? Not Kabuki. What am I talking about? Um, Kabukaisa. Kabukaisa. Maybe it's Kabukaisa. Kabukaisa. And then they have this other one, and Kabukai Shah is like where people can invest, and it's anyways it's like a stock company, it's where people can invest and into the um, company and stuff like that. Then they have these other ones. I forgot what the name of it, but I'll just say the um, I'll just call it mid size. Someone else could um, tell me what it's mid sized businesses. Those are the businesses where people can't um, invest in your business. But they, they do make a lot of money. Probably not as much as these people, I don't think. But they can make a lot of money. And they can make millions. Okay, and then you have the private that are owned by um, an individual and ran by an individual. And these two can make a lot of money. So all of these can make a lot of money. It just depends on uh, the size and how you want to um, grow it and things like that. But these people who work here, they know about their business and they know about the company. And you can interview them, you know, and they tell you, you know, why was the company started and, you know, just simple things like that. You know, how do people work and what's the goal and the problems and, you know, and, and, and within each um, business or companies, they also have their social problems and stuff. And it's, it's just, it's not, no difference from the States or wherever country or wherever you come from is the same. Okay, you talk to the men's size, those are, those are people who have their registered companies also. Both of these are registered. These usually are not. And they, um, there are a lot of people who are doing these. And they're making a lot of money. They're successful also. And those people are around too. And they're really easy. I mean, everyone is easy to talk to. You know, especially if you go to like cafes and stuff and you want to talk to them. You know, somebody drove up, drive up in the Maybach, I saw one the other day, it was the first one I saw in Japan. Or, you know, um, nice cars, whatever, you know, these luxury cars, and they pop out, or they come in groups, like Ferraris, three, four at a time, you know. I think the most I've seen a group was like eight, you know, they brand new ones, you know. They jump out, drinking coffee, they all sitting together and talking, and they all Japanese men. You know, I walk by and go, hey, how you doing? And they wear, they're not wearing suits. They're wearing jogging clothes. You know, you're out there jogging. You got your sweatsuit and sweatpants. And they're wearing that. You know, some got their gold. Some some even had chains and stuff. You know, they got their hair cut, whatever. You know, it's their style. And you can walk over to them and just say, hey, you know, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. 
and you can trade numbers for all. You might have one that might not be interested because uh, he may not be interested, not because he doesn't like black people, but you disturb him. <laughs> and he might think that, but the other ones might be very friendly and stuff. But I haven't had anyone who actually uh, said that I disturbed them, but I'm just saying it might be that there might be a possibility. You know, um, like one day I drove up in front of Starbucks and it was this pink Lamborghini out there and everybody was taking pictures of it. I did too. And the guy who owned it had a pink shirt on, so you knew it was here. So I walked up and said, well, it's your car. He's like, yeah. You know, we talked for a bit and I I don't know if we trade numbers or not, but a lot of times I do trade numbers with people. And I trade numbers with guys and girls, but I never call anybody. I don't know why I just don't, you know, but um, they're nice, okay? They're really nice. But anyway, you can talk to a lot of these people, and you write about what they're talking about, you know, uh, what they're doing, and how they get started, talk about their lifestyle, and things like that, and this is very good, okay? Um, yeah, let me get back to this agenda real quick, because I think I forgot something. Um, your agenda out here should be to come here, work, if you're making $2,500 a month, you can easily save thousand dollars but you have to really budget and not go out so much if you want to go out and really enjoy your life you can easily you can spend two thousand dollars every month you know rent might be five hundred dollars and an extra fifteen hundred dollars you know eating food enjoying yourself you know but you can definitely save um, at least five hundred dollars a month and of course that's going to be six thousand dollars a year but with that six thousand dollars a year like I said in my other videos there are a lot of things that you can do with that money and as you're talking to a lot of people and things like that, um, they'll give you ideas and you can do business with other people and start businesses with other people and things like that. It's not that impossible and it's not something that um, you should avoid or anything. You should really attempt to do these, okay? Here, as far as international communications, a lot of people take these classes also in school, but you know, you'll study it, you'll study it, but who, how often do they have a chance to actually engage? You're, every day you're in Japan, you're going to work, you're on a train, you're talking to people. That's international communications. Now, what are you communicating about might be a different story, but still, it's the whole thing. is international communications, just talking to people who are in other countries, and you get to learn the languages. Of, we learn languages of all around the world. You can go home. You know, I can, get, I can go back to Venice and I can teach my um, friends and my homies how to speak in Japanese real quick, real quick, real quick. It's really simple. You know, even though my Japanese is bad, but I really don't try to focus on it so much and study. But it's really simple. Um, a lot of other brothers that, who live in all these other countries, Middle East, can come back and teach Arabic or whatever. You know, we, we, have our, um, we have our teachers and professors and people who can teach us things. They, we're here. We're, we're out in the world, okay? Um, so the international communication is really easy. You know, of course, you got to communicate to people about their businesses and how people talk through different um, languages. You got, um, you have, I think they call it, I'm not sure, but they got the, um, it's called Ben, okay? It's like a style. And we have, um, it's like Hansai Ben. Kansai Ben, and I'm thinking, I want to say Kanto Ben, but I'm not sure. But it's up in Tokyo or something like that. You got Wakayama Ben, and basically it's just slang, you know. Um, like in Wakayama Kama Hen, Wakari Hen. So the Hen means like no, or um, it's like not, okay. And so you have those, and you can talk about those. International relationships are very very interesting out here. Okay, it ranged from friendships, okay, from friends, from friends to um, dating, dating, and marriage. Okay, and all of these here you can talk to, I mean, I talked to one of my students and stuff about marriage, and another student about dating, and then I have my friends. And you can talk about those. I mean, you can write a book, a long book about it, because it's the, the dating in Japan is really interesting. I'm not just saying 
Japanese people and uh, foreign people. I'm talking about um, everybody. You know, you got foreign people out here dating foreign people and things. And the stories that I hear are funny. You would be surprised what people do out here. The phones with people, kind of messages and pictures and all kinds of things. You know, these people are sharing with each other. And then you got, like, sometimes I had a friend. He was sending some um, message to some girl and sent a picture and ended up sending it to me by mistake. And I'm like, yo, man, you know, you got to... And then, and my friend, he wasn't... Uh, it doesn't matter what relationality he was, but he wasn't paying attention. And he said, I'm like, you got to be careful, you know. And people just send all kinds of stuff. And, and women do too. They just, you know, so the, um, the relationships out here is really, really interesting because then you have, I don't, I don't know, you have these relationships where they're not relationships. They just, you see them, and it's not a one night stand or something like that. It's just you'll see that person, you'll say hi, and and you, there's no communication or anything. And then the next time they see you, they act like they just met you the other day, or you guys act like you just met the other day. You talk and might go out to dinner, you know, and that's it. And they might won't, won't see each other for another six months, three years, or whatever. And you got those kind of relationships too. But these are very, very good to talk about. The friends is very interesting because um, they're, if they're, you know, I'm going to tell you, they're almost exactly the same as in the States. You got friends that act like they're dating. You got friends that act like they're married. You got people that's married that act like they're friends. You got people that's married that act like they're dating. You got people that's dating that act like they're friends. And, and people that are um, dating act like they're married and stuff like that. Then you got people who are married and they act like they're enemies and People who date and they act like they're enemies, they're friends, they act like they're enemies and stuff, but yet they still keep this communication, I guess, to prevent a total feel, the total feeling of isolation and things like that. But the um, international relationships out here in Japan are really interesting. My Do You Love video, um, Do You Love Black Men videos are not about sex. Like I tell brothers, you guys come out here, you enjoy the peace. Bring some cameras, take pictures, talk to people, take pictures of the houses. I mean, like here, 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 uh, you still, if you can see the house, you got these Japanese style homes. And when you go out into the, um, into the uh, countryside, sorry about the movie. If you go out into the countryside, you'll see a whole bunch of them. And they're just very, very beautiful. And. You know, take pictures of them. You know, you talk about them. Sometimes you see people walking on the street, and if you speak Japanese, you should really learn the Japanese fast and speak to them. They might be, they might look like all funny and stuff, or get some type of uh, reaction. But it's not because they're scared of you. It's because they're surprised that you're speaking to them. Because usually, Japanese people don't speak to each other on the streets, and um, and everybody's so busy doing what they're doing. You know. And so you walk up to them and go see my sin, and they and you might be the only one in the streets, and we're we're like out, you're in an outgoing type of a um, attitude right now, but and we're the only ones on the street. So when you say see my sin, and they're they're not paying attention. They most of the time they're just not paying attention, and they just keep walking. You're like, well, they're racist because they ignore you. Well, just because they ignore you don't mean they're racist. It means they just don't want to talk to you, and it's their privilege. You know, but um, more than like that's not the case. They're just probably deep in thought about something else. So you have to kind of like get in front of you. Excuse me, say my sin, say my sin. You know, like, huh, huh, huh. you talking to me? You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking. They're like, wow, I'm surprised. Why are you talking to me? Nobody never talks to me. No one has spoken to me in five years, you know, except for in the house. But me and my husband, me and my wife, we don't really talk. You know, the kids, they just run away. Blah, 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 you know, so you talk to them, and all you have to do is say, hey, how you doing? I'm visiting from America, my name da 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 and I want to ask you some questions about your neighborhood, you know, if you understand it, and say, well, how long have you been here? And that's all, how long have you lived here? And that's it. And now, and if you have a recording, you should ask them to record. You record, it's better to get some people to translate for you, or you try to translate yourself. And, um... 
they'll give you so much information that's not contained in these books. There are a lot of things out here that people do that are no different than what we do in the States. So you talk to these people. Okay, so the relation, the internet relationship is very good. Um, as far as the marriage, let me talk about the marriage right now. If you come out here, I'm sure your agenda is not to get married, okay? And a lot of um, foreign guys end up getting married to Japanese women. Okay, you got people that's haters on my channel and stuff like that. And a lot of them probably don't even live in Japan. Um, I get some people who might say they live in Japan or whatever. It ain't Japanese. I'm talking about Japanese pride, but they're married to a white person or they're married to a non-Japanese person or something like that or a black person or whatever. But yet they hate me. You know, so you have, so when I meet these people, I'm like, well, you know, you're, you're a hypocrite, you know, but, um, the thing about marriage is when you come out here, like I said, we look at Japan as a, as an example to us about what a good society is, but every society has its goodness, like even in our neighborhoods, we have good people in in our neighborhoods, and it, you know, we might have someone that's bad, but you know, you talk to these people, you talk to them, and you show them something because the whole thing is a lot of people just don't know, or they've been told they can't do anything, and so they don't try. You know, like the um, elephant, getting, you know, the baby calf, elephant calf, or whatever, is chained to a small chamber when it gets big and it can easily run away because it's tugged so much, it just doesn't try it again. And that's why I say in my videos, over 40 videos, you try again, start all over, you know. And um, you come out here and you see how everyone's dressed. Now, when you're in the cities, everyone dresses nice. When you're out in the countryside, you know, the girls, they're walking around in their pajamas, <laughs> you know. And it's, it's funny, you know, some of these kids, you know, these, um, they don't care. Some do care, you know, they always dress nice. And you're asking why are they dressed nice. And this is, oh, I don't even have it. International, um, their psychology. Psychology. The way they're thinking and stuff like that. That's a really good topic to talk about and to write about. You know, how, why is it that they, these women just dress real nice just to go to a convenience store? You know, or you got the college students that do the same thing, or some women, they just go in their pajamas. You know, because like my wife, she does that too, just wear pajamas. She got nice clothes, you know, and go to so she don't care, you know. So why do people have those type of attitudes and stuff? So it's really good. But as far as marriage, let me finish that real quick. Is when you come out here and you meet um, a woman, Japanese or whomever, it doesn't matter, but I'll talk about Japanese women. Um, you have to understand that in the States, you are nothing in your neighborhood. But to foreign women... You, they probably look at you as something good. So you watch the videos, you know, the black videos, black videos, whatever, and they got blues and jazz and all kinds of videos. So these women out here, they're looking at all kinds of videos, not just rap videos. So they might see somebody singing something that's real romantic and they like it because of the beat and everything. And then they see a black man and they think about that music. And stuff like that. I mean, because really, when you think about it, I mean, when you, you see someone that you like, okay, you see another sister, okay, or your white guy, you see a white woman. So, what really makes you attractive to this person? You know, because if it's just um, visual, okay, that's good, but um, not too many people know how to appreciate a naked body anyway. So, you're pretty much probably thinking on the stuff in your hand, but the attraction, the, the beauty, or the physical or the visual attraction is going to change, especially if they start getting fat, getting older, and things like that. So, what else is going to keep you with that person with the other attractions and stuff? You know, so you know that's why I talk about imaginations because these people they people create a, imagine an image about somebody, and that tends to keep them together uh, with that person. And then once that um, image fades away, then they they're gone. But um, when you come out here and you're in good shape, you don't even really have to be in good shape out here, but if you're in good shape and everything, you know, they're going to look because you have to understand a lot of these haters, women and guys, what they don't stop to think about is that when another, when a woman 
a female look at a male, or once they look at a male, what are they thinking? They could be thinking all kinds of stuff. Just like you walk and you see a girl and she's um, beautiful. You're like, oh my God, you know, next thing you know, in your head, you're already dating. You're probably already married. You know, probably already done had intercourse. You know, probably driving down the street in her car, your car, taking trips. You know, just one view in five seconds, you know, imagine a whole life, life experience with this woman. You know, and everyone does that, you know, and women, they get um, stimulated by things that we don't get stimulated by. And we get stimulated looking at them, you know, and they don't, and, you know, it's, it's something like that, I can't remember my mind is gone. But anyway, so they look at us and they see, uh, like I said, the hypnotism of black. So if you got darker skin or dark skin, you know, they like, you know, or they're like, oh my God, this guy in person, you know, oh my God, whatever. But I think the main reason is, it's not even that, you know, I think what it is, is um, opportunities, okay? Um, the normal person in a normal neighborhood, it doesn't matter when you marry someone in your neighborhood, the opportunity of you to actually be successful in that neighborhood is very, very slim. And you can make money and everything and doing the same job, but it's really, I mean, it's okay, but it's not really all that exciting. But for a Japanese woman to marry a Japanese man, then the chances of her actually being able to go out and travel or live in another country is there, but it's slim. Okay, and the percentage is small. And then, you know, now you got all these problems and stuff, these social, international relationships, you know, the um, problems out here, just like they are worldwide, you know, between men and women, it's like really getting bad. It's, it's kind of ridiculous and stuff. So, she can marry a husband, and out here, the, um, there's a set pattern of how the marriage is going to go. Two kids, sex stops, just together, go out sometimes and everything. You know, there are some um, couples, if they've had some international experience and they get together, they usually have fun. There are some couples, it depends on where they live in that too, you know, that they'll have fun. But for the most part, um, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are just like, you know. So, um, they'll see you, a single woman, and she probably have problems with Japanese men. Everybody has problems, it doesn't matter. And so, She'll see you. She probably, let's say she have a job making $1,800 a month. You come along, you make me $2,500 a month. Or she's a college student, hadn't worked, or, or maybe she's in her 30s, you know, and she's just got a part-time job and just sitting at home and, you know, her boyfriend, she's bored of him or whatever, you know. And you come along and you are happy, smiling, oh, I'm in Japan, you know. I'm having fun, I got my job, and I'm making 2500 you know, a month, and I'm, I'm here in Japan, and I'm in Japan, and I'm in Japan, I'm just, I'm in Japan, you know, and she's like, wow, this guy has a secure job, you know, and they'll go on, and they'll talk to you, and it's, it's not a bad thing, because you don't want to be, you don't want to hook up with somebody that's financially insecure, so you want to hook up with someone who's financially uh, secure. So, the women out here control the money. You get married, you love your wife, they know how to please you, they know how to get you like a dog. Like this, so they know how to do that to you. They'll whip it right on you, you know. And so you, you're taking, she's doing everything, taking your money, managing it, and it's nothing, it's nothing wrong with that. You know, like I said, it's really nothing wrong with that. Like just a lot of guys just got their agendas real because that's not what they were planning on doing but these women they have their agendas also so they uh, marry you and then they'll make sure you're working and you keep bringing that same amount or even try to um, start a business and things like that and that money is coming in and they just focusing in on that money once the two kids come it's like you know hey business 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 and now they have something to be active in and participate in and they have their opinions in it and things like that because it's their business. They don't have to worry about Japanese culture as far as, you know, fight with their Japanese men because they, because the 
Japanese men don't have anything to do with it. It's just her. And then she'll kind of like push you away. And then the women out here, they got this real tight network. So they can work together and she can get mothers in and convince them or whatever, you know. And you'll be taken care of and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just the fact is that you won't have an opportunity to give back to the neighborhood that you are there. And a lot of people say, well, I don't want to give back to my neighborhood. My neighborhood is bad. But it's only bad because no one's actually going there and changing it and trying to change it. And a lot of you think, because like last night I had a conversation with a friend, and he was talking about his um, network that he used to I think Black Empowerment Network or something. And he was giving his ideas. And I just said, hey, you know, maybe you might want to think about other ways to um, encourage people to join and we got in this big argument because he thought I was saying something else and I'm like, huh? I'm like, okay, whatever, forget it, you know. So um, the whole thing is um, I don't even know why I even brought that up. But anyway, I brought it for you about to go. But your whole oh yeah, so your whole agenda about going home and helping once you get married goes out the window because she's gonna think about what she wanna do or how she want her family to run. And most of the guys don't have a say. And that's really good, you know, that you can write about also. And most men don't have a say. It's just what she said or, or you're out, period, you know. And um, uh, I've gotten a letter from this one white guy from Canada. He was talking about how his wife was like a monster wife and too mean. And he didn't have any leverage and stuff. And so he ended up going back to Canada. And she's here. I guess he might still be here with two kids and stuff. He just said, I love you, but I can't handle it here, you know. And I'm sure he didn't come here to get married. You know, his agenda just got derailed and stuff. And he could have um, done a lot of stuff and, you know, really helped a lot, you know, to, work to his community, to his parents and things like that. But, you know, he got derailed from his agenda. So please be careful about that because the marriage and things, you know, they'll look at these girls, these women, they'll look at you like, wow, he's financially secure because they know how much money English teachers make and our, they know our jobs, well, most people's jobs, you sit there and work for like two or three hours, tell them, not even that long, you know, I mean, actually active working might be really short, but you got to stay there all day, you know, and um, they're bringing in all this money and then the guys are wasting it making $2,500 and you're living paycheck to paycheck and you broke so these women come in they'll manage it for you and next thing you know you're, you're she's she's able to reproduce and she's able to have a um, a positive constructive life in her eyes and then also that money that you're making is staying within the Japanese community I mean economic system and it's going to positive things as if it's going all about twenty five hundred dollars going up to the club. You know, but where is your responsibilities to send money back home to your parents? Because they save money and they help their parents. You know, the mother you they live in America, their mother gets sick, they coming back to Japan, you come into you in Japan, your mother gets sick, you think she's gonna come to Japan or even probably let you come to I mean go back home. You know, or even let you go back home with you, I hardly doubt that's going to be the case, you know. So it's it's really something you guys really need about to think about your agenda. And I'm not saying don't get married or anything, but I'm saying that if you if you just fall in love because of, uh, oh my God, you know, she got some nice jeans. Okay, marry her jeans, you know. You see what her jeans are like, which, you know, the clothes, what you see is what you get, you know, but you can't transform your emotions from from jeans onto a person thinking that the jeans, what you see in the jeans is actually the person because it's not. A lot of people get trapped in that. So that's why, you know, I tell our brother, you come out here, you know, just come out here for the peace because um, a lot of the women out here, and even the men too, you know, they looking for um, foreign women, you know, so that they can have fun with. Yeah, so they can have fun with and enjoy life and things like that. And some guys like, I don't want to marry a Japanese woman. I want me an Australian woman, this woman, or that woman, or whatever. And I'm like, well, why don't you try to own a mother? And you know, you, and you can you come out here and you talk to them.
He also thinks that you can write in prison books and stuff like that. Okay, let me move on. Because the marriage thing is really important and you guys really be careful. Because the whole thing is you'll be taken care of, but she'll treat you like a kid. And that's what most of the mothers, I mean, the wives do, you know, oh, mama, oh, casa, mama, 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 papa, papa, papa. And that's what they call each other, the married couples and stuff. But not all of them. They got some successful um, people out here whose relationship is good, but, you know, everybody just gets distracted by their whatever activities they're in. Okay, culture exchange is another thing I talked a lot. Because this is really important. There's so much I can say about that. Culture exchanges is just about um, you just sharing things that you do in your neighborhood and you're sharing the things that they do in their neighborhood. And um, when you go to the store, like one time I went to a udon shop and I had some udon that had some on top of some white stuff. I don't know what it was. Maybe um, radish or something. I'm not sure. And they got this, um, this um, they call it dashi, but it's just sauce that you, um, this um, sauce that you put on it and it's kind of like water soup or something like that you put on it. So I just was going to put it in. This one lady running from behind the counter, just running like, oh, hey, no, she dove on me and tackled me and slapped the ball out my hand and said, you don't put this soup in this udon. I will kick the living oh, audience she kicked me and no nah, no nah, she didn't do that but she came over there and when i was going to do it she kind of like grabbed the nozzle and said no 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 you don't do it like this i'm like who cares <laughs> you know i just want to eat i just want something wet to put on it um something wet with a little flavor just to put on it so i can eat it because i'm always putting like green the um, chopped onions and um they got some ginger or something in there anyway you know, so she was like, no, no, you don't do that. You use this, and you put it like this, and you eat it like this. And I'm thinking like, wait a minute. This lady is giving me this cultural, international cultural eating style over some noodles that I paid like $3.50 that I just want to eat and get out of there. And why is she doing this? You know, but... Maybe there was something in her where she was um, showing me the proper way that people in Japan eat certain udon meals. You know, because they got, the, it's the same udon maybe, but yeah, I think it's the same udon, but they have different things that they put on in different sauces and soups and stuff that they use. And so at first I was like, oh, and I was like, okay, fine. So she said, well, you do it like this. Da, 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 da. I'm just like, wow, this lady's really into this, you know. But, um, it was just really interesting. So, in a lot of places that you go, like, um, people will, if they come from the blue, and they're going to, excuse me, but you can't do that, you know? Those are culture exchanges. They're explaining to you how to socialize in Japan in such a way where you might walk down the street, and you might, um, when you go across the street, you might put your hand up like your little kids do. You know, some people do, older people do it, some people do that. And they put their hands up and they cross the street, you know. And if you do that, somebody, you never know, it might, somebody say, wow, you know, who told you that? You know, I'll come over and talk to you because they're going to have a sense, oh, that person knows Japanese culture. Because how many foreigners do you see walk across the street doing that? You know, it's very rare that you see it, if you see it at all. So, um, the cultural exchanges here are really good. And then you can also teach them. Now, they might, um, like one day I was, um, my first wife, we went into a um, Chinese restaurant. And she was mad. She was arguing and stuff. And it was this one Japanese man. He spoke English. I don't know why everyone in, in uh, Nagoya speaks English. But she spoke English. He spoke English. And she, he told her, he said, uh, listen, you need to be kind to him. And she was like, what are you saying? And she said, you don't know his history and what things that you've been to. So he said, um, black people are being um, labeled this and that, and it's not their fault because of um, because we don't we just don't have the power. They don't have the power to do you know to change things the way they want to. You know, if you're living in the middle of the um, if you're living in the middle of the city and and the whole coastline is controlled by your enemies, now how are you going to eat? And how are you going to be able to survive? And you know, and you're out number two. 
So, you know, it was funny he did that. And she was, she got even more upset, you know. And um, he said, just relax. Japan is a really nice place. But relax and enjoy yourself. Just just relax, okay? It's really peaceful. And I was like, okay. And I sat down. You know, we got home. She was, blah, 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 blah. And, but, you know, every time my wife's all my wife's see little after my phone time, I'm out. I just leave and go into something else and have fun. So I got to stay there and listen to that crap. But, um. It's really interesting, you know, the cultural exchanges. So while you're here, you write about that stuff. Those are other, these are like other things that you can do. Okay, international marketing. You know, you go to school and you learn all this about the international marketing. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, international marketing is no more than you have a product and you just want to sell it to someone, and you just walk over there and say, "Ika, ika, 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 huh? Ika, huh? Wow, ika, ika, ah, uh, forget. I haven't used that in a long time." But it's it's just saying, hey, what do you think about this? Or would you like would you like to buy this or something? And it's just real. The only business in Japan with these companies here is pretty much simple. You know, even with these, it's the same thing. You know, except for here, it might be a little bit more formal. But with these, is real. Especially this is really simple. You, you, I mean, you can do. I can, I've made businesses business contacts where every month you were getting like two thousand to five thousand. Well, not five thousand. But like three thousand or something from three thousand dollars, and you only, they don't need a lot, just a little bit of stuff. But yet every month, two or three thousand from a bunch of people come in. You, that stuff adds up, you know. And you know, it's not a billion dollar, billion dollar uh, contracts and stuff like that. But you walk in and say, hey, you know, I'm dressed like this. I have my basketball attire on. I'm going to a store and looking and stuff. And the person come over and help you. What are you doing? You know, then what are you doing? You know, it's really some a lot of tactics and stuff too. But I've made a lot of um, business um, doing that. And um, all it is, is just you presenting something to them. And then you just have to convince them that, first of all, they can sell it. <laughs> okay, That their customers demand this. They want this and they can sell it. And then after they, you convince that they can sell it, then you, know, you talk about the prices and stuff like that. But the international marketing really isn't that difficult. Now, the most, most of the difficulty things, like I said, is going to be the product, the cost, the delivery, the insurance, uh, the assurance of, you know, if anything breaks, you'll be able to take care of it and things like that. So those things are very, very important to do. But um, if you're out here and you, um, you're, um, you're talking about this, you know, are you writing about it, um, they'll tell you. You know, you walk up, well, how, is your, how do you conduct your international marketing? And they say, well, we export here, we import there, we go, we have to go there to talk to these people so they can make this product, and then we have them ship it, they ship it over to us, and da 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 and customs, and all of that stuff. And, and it's not, I mean, I, you know, I tell my friends, marketing, well, I wouldn't say marketing, but management, you know, it's no different from putting your clothes on. For marketing too, because every time you go to an interview, you market yourself, you walk in there, and you say, excuse me, but I have skills that you need, you know, and it just depends on the person, if your looks, you know, your body shape, and, and all of that stuff is important, you know, because sometimes that your actual ability to do something, and to some people might not be important, because especially if they just want customers coming in, they just want the money, you know, then it's all emotional and stuff. But um, this is really interesting um, to uh, talk about. And again, you can talk to um, these people here, these businesses. They'll tell you this. But then, you know, you, you friends and things too. A lot of people in Japan are very, um, very uh, business-minded people, especially when you go to the um, countryside. you got people who are growing their own food and they're selling it, you know, especially the older people. And you go talk to these people, you know. And if they don't talk to you that day, you just keep going back and keep saying hi. Eventually, they'll talk to you because a lot of people like attention. And the best attention to get free information that you can give someone is an open ear. And that's the truth. Okay, the international lifestyles are very interesting. I hear you got women dressing black, saying they black. Guys dressing black, saying they black. Women dressing white, saying, you know, they white and this and that. And it's, it's all kinds of stuff you got. You got your um, uh, a 
affordable housing uh, areas and you got your rich areas and you got people in affordable housing areas driving around the benzes and then you got the people in the rich area they all drive around benzes and that's why I say you really don't know who's what you know and then um, you got the different ranks and stuff they still have out here in Minnesota and stuff like that and uh, like one time I went to um, this one lady's house and she asked me to come over to help her daughter with some English and I walked in the house and I was stunned because this lady was she's in her 40s and fine nice body nice legs and everything I also got the sister too nice thick lips beautiful woman and um, I walked in the house and I was devastated I was like whoa your house is a mess and I was really shocked and there were like one two three like four women in the house I think they were all living together or something like that and I was really shocked I was like you know I wanted to say you need to clean up and she said I don't mind my house you know so I sat and helped her daughter and stuff and, and then I walked by her room her room was clean but the whole rest of the house was like a mess and I was like wow you know surprised because you know you got this image of Japan being um, clean but you know people are people you know and um, you know maybe she just didn't feel like cleaning it you know and if she invited me in the house she probably just thought I didn't care so you know but it was really interesting and some other people house I went in one of my other friends houses um, one of my other friends houses this lady <clears throat> and uh, she was a single mom and stuff so we were just talking I went in her house and her house was a mess, you know, the kids was at school, and I just asked her, I said, why don't you clean up your house, you know, and she was like, oh, you know, whatever, you know, and I was thinking, like, wow, you know, same, you know, a lot of people mistakes, so I just got to clean up the whole house and stuff, and she was really surprised, I think she was angry, not because um, I cleaned up her house, because I think she wanted to talk about some other stuff, but I was couldn't talk about anything, and so I left, I mean, we were good friends for a long time, but I was like, whatever, okay, you know. People are people, you know. So the um, lifestyles are very interesting. And, you know, a lot of girls, like I know some friends, some girls, right? And, and some guys too. But most of my friends are girls. I'm not having sex with these women, you know, because I'm going to tell you, women are better off being friends than sex partners you know, or stuff like that until you really get to know them. You really get to know them and know how they are. Because like I told one of my friends um, the other day, he was talking about some relationship he was having problems with. And, well, my students thought to come. I haven't talked to him in 47 minutes. Okay, my student, uh, he was upset about something. And about his girl or something like that. And I said, well, did you talk? He said, no. I said, listen, man. The number one rule when you meet a woman, the first thing you ask, you walk after you ask them their name, or if they tell you the name, when the first quest, serious question you get to ask them, you don't ask them if they have a boyfriend, you don't ask them if they're married, because if they're married they shouldn't be talking to you. You don't have to ask those things. When you meet a woman, it don't matter if you're dating her or not, even friends, you know, you do the same thing. The first thing that come out of your mouth is you ask them, how are you when you are angry? Because that's going to be the crossroads and that's going to be the main gears that turn your relationship into something good or bad. Because the way they act when their equilibrium is oh, 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 it's all messed up and stuff, which is an equilibrium, right? Okay, so when everything gets unbalanced, that's the first thing you ask. When you ask a woman, hey, how are you when you're angry? And if she's like, huh? Friends, why are you asking me that? Then that's a good question. You're like, well, I just want to know, you know, just in case if something develops. And, you know, and then then after that, and she said, well, I don't know. Then, friends, forever, you know. And some women say, well, I don't get upset. Then say, well, how do you handle the situation? Some women, if they give you a mature response, then the possibility is there. Okay, but... You don't want to be with a woman, and even women, you don't want to be with a guy that just can't handle um, the situation. They get me right. You all, baby. I was a woman. I'm like, 
like they say, nigga, please, I'm out of here. And just go on because I'm telling you, black women, you don't have to listen to all that crap that these black men are saying because you have other opportunities overseas and in other places where you, you do it. Because your responsibility is not to please a man. Your responsibility is to develop your agendas and find someone where you can cooperate together and that's having the same kind of agenda. And it's not about sleeping and having babies only and all that stuff. It's it's a mess because if the economy crash, how are you going to eat? Do you have seeds saved up? You know, how are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? Do you know this? Do you know that? You know, and do you know about the herbs and all that stuff? So, um, but anyway, it's kind of like talking to the guys too, though. But be careful, okay? So the lifestyles here, you know, I have people, like, yeah, I had this one friend from Canada, they do, they did it, like a nice apartment. $1,300 for rent, so he must have had a good salary, I guess, but um, it was really nice, really nice, clean place, you know, and um, I go to some Japanese homes, beautiful homes, oh my God, just like walk in, like, oh my God, roofs like 50 stories high, and they got ponds outside, nice cars, and, you know, I had this one Japanese guy, he was like 50, 59 or something. He said, hey, this month, you know, I made 40 G's. And he just sticked his wallet out and took it out. Look, look, have you ever held $40,000 in your hands? Here, put my hands up. What do you think about, like, here, and I give it back to him. He said, what do you think about, like, it was good. You, very good job, you know. And it wasn't even a real business. It was some, 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 just, like, playing checkers. And he made 40000 you know. So the lifestyles I hear is really different. The way people eat, the way they dress, and it's really stank. But but don't get fooled by it. You know, look behind and see what they're really doing because there's a lot of show, and it's just like in the states too. Okay, and last thing I talk about is international hobbies. That is a good thing to talk about because a lot of Japanese people are out here in different cultures. Well, I'm just Japanese. They do a lot of things. They go different places and get involved in all kinds of sports and you know guys like it's basketball that can just handle the ball or you know they play baseball American football cycling I went with a friend and uh, he invited me to a um, dinner with him and his friends they're all cyclists and they was telling about all these trips and they go to this one guy used to babysit my uh, kids this guy go to Shik he go to Shikoku and his friends they get in cars go to Shiba, Shiba can to make B1 drop and ride around it and all kinds of stuff. People out here do fishing is really um, popular out here. A lot of people are into chess. You might go to Starbucks, especially when it's at uh, Sensabachi. They end up playing chess and stuff and all kinds of other sports. You know, hiking is really good out here and rafting and stuff like that. Um, you see some people, you know, doing a kite thing. What's it called? Um, again, oh my some I forgot the name of it but there are a lot of hobbies that people are doing and, and games too you know a lot of games and things like that so um, those are really those are really um, easy to write about too and like I said it does your book doesn't necessarily have to be all in t detail or whatever but that's some other things you might want to do so while you're here you know after about six months you know you get used to everything you know start writing about these because you don't have to you don't, for those people who are here and who took these classes, then this should just be a supplement, you know, to the other half to what you study in school. For those who didn't study, well, we got a chance to just get absorbed in everything, you know, and we learn it from, you know, naturally, you know, we're learning and stuff. And that's about it. Um, like I said, um, business, communications, relationship, culture, marketing, lifestyle, hobbies. All these things are things that we can learn and we can share with people in our communities and um, let them know, talk to your parents, bring them over, tell them about business. If they don't understand you too, you gotta take them small steps. Mom, it's like you going to the store and you buying some milk that costs a um, $4.50 or whatever it is in the States, I'm not sure I forget the prices and stuff. And you buy some milk, you know, it's the same thing. You know, you have a demand and a supply. And I 
sent. And, and they will really get the money, mom. You know, I was in Japan, and for some reason, I saved a thousand nine hundred dollars every month. You know, I was there three years. I got this money, mom. I got this money, mom. What do you need? What is there? You know, and you you tell your mom, you tell your father, and they start thinking and talking to their friends, and you send stuff back, and you tell them, and you the information that you learn, you. It works in every country. It's the same thing. And next thing you know, your parents making money. They happy. And they're telling their friends. They're probably hiring people. And everybody gets this new bus. Oh, okay. Now I understand about this business thing. And then you do, they explain it to their kids. And the kids start going to school because now they're able to even not just go to school and study, but they're able to go to school and actually work in that type of environment, which opens their eyes up. And it's, it's, I mean, in my head, it's a really good thing, you know. But anyway, I'm out.